Welcome to this presentation, which has been prepared to help you prepare your presentation for the International Confederation of Midwives Congress. We hope the information provided will support you to do a presentation that helps you share your important information at the Congress in a way that engages your audience. In this presentation, we'll focus on these areas. The rules or requirements of the Conference Organising Committee, your main message, tips for engaging your audience, how to present your slides to best effect, how to incorporate pictures in your presentation with appropriate acknowledgement, ways to manage your stress levels and finally how to finish a presentation strongly. The very first thing you should do when preparing a presentation for a conference is to find out about the rules or requirements of the conference organisers. These requirements may have been included in the communication you received from the organisers when they informed you that your presentation was accepted. Or you may need to check the conference website. Conference organisers will specify the amount of time you have to talk and whether this includes time for questions. What sort of media can be accommodated, for example, PowerPoint or Keynote for Mac users, video or audio. Some conference organisers will expect you to submit your presentation in advance of the conference. If that is the case, what is the due date for this submission? In some cases, you can bring your presentation with you to the conference on a flash drive and load it in advance of your presentation date. If you are presenting a poster, the organisers will usually specify the dimensions of the poster and also the orientation, whether it's landscape or portrait. Please check the conference website to learn about the rules for your presentation. Whether you are sharing a story about your practice or presenting research, your presentation should have one clear message. You should decide on this before you start preparing your presentation. What is the one main point you want your audience to take away from your presentation? There may be many things that you want to share with the audience about your work. For example, in your research you may have several findings. However, presentations that focus very clearly on one main message are more effective. In the example here, my presentation shares the results of an evaluation of the online conference called the Virtual International Day of the Midwife Conference. The evaluation had a number of findings, including how the conference contributed to midwives' professional development, and also how the participants enjoyed interacting with other midwives in the online conference platform. I chose to make this last point the main message of the presentation. The audience will be most attentive and open to your main message if you can fully engage them in your topic. You need to make them care. Why should they care about what you have to present? What are the reasons they should care about this topic? In the example provided previously, I might start by explaining how expensive it is to attend a conference in person. I might highlight that many midwives are not able to afford to go to conferences. I might also want to talk about our carbon footprint and how travel to overseas conferences contributes to global warming. I hope that the audience might then start to think, ah, I can see why a presentation about online conferences might be useful. Another way to help your audience engage with your topic is to tell them a story or give the issue a human face. In this example, I might introduce them to a midwife called Maria from Bolivia. She could be fictitious or she could be real. In, in this context, the story is a device to engage the audience. I could tell them that she's one of very few midwives in her area, that she can't afford to travel to conferences, but that she really wants to hear about innovations and research in midwifery so she can provide the best care possible to women. She's also isolated and doesn't have much opportunity to connect with other midwives, though she does have access to the internet. Again, I hope that the audience might then start to think, yes, 
I can see why a presentation about online conferences might be useful. If you want to explore the issue of engaging your audience further, I recommend that you search YouTube for examples of the three-minute thesis presentations. A presentation by Haley Teasdale is just one example. In this competition, presenters have only three minutes to present their research thesis to an audience. They must quickly engage their audience, and you should pay attention to the ways they achieve this. Next, make your presentation mostly visual. Pictures, not words. Words should be kept to a minimum. The audience cannot read and listen at the same time. If they are reading your slides, they are not listening to you. You should be the focus of the presentation, not your slides. They are there to support you. Here's an example. If you are presenting findings from an international sur survey, for example, rather than describing in words the different countries from which participants came, think about presenting the information graphically for greater impact. Keep your slides clean and simple. The image on the right is more attractive than the one on the left because it is ordered uncluttered and tidy. The same principles apply to your slides. Here's an example of a slide that has too much information and is too cluttered. Think about some ways that you might simplify this slide. Your slides. PowerPoint is one of the most popular tools for creating presentations though it's not the only one. Keynote is presentation software that is available to those using Apple Mac products and this is becoming more popular. You may want to explore alternatives, but please make sure that the conference organisers can accommodate your chosen product. Whatever software you use, there are some important rules to follow to ensure your presentation goes smoothly and is interesting to the audience. Remember that you are the focus, not the slide presentation. The presentation slides are there to support you. Keep the number of slides to a minimum. Ideally, there should be no more than 10 to 20 slides for a 20 minute presentation. Do not provide a lot of detail. Do not read directly from the slides. Use the key points on the slide to prompt you to explain the points. Do not use a lot of animations, if any at all. They are distracting. Practice speaking it out aloud with your slides so you are sure you are within the time limit. If you want to know more about how to avoid some of the pitfalls of using PowerPoint for your presentation, look up the TED Talk on YouTube by David Phillips called How to Avoid Death by PowerPoint. It's very humorous and we think you'll enjoy it. Presentations are more engaging when you use images rather than words. Did you know that you often need permission to use images that you might find on the internet? If you don't have permission from the owner of an image, you can search for images that have a Creative Commons license. This license enables free distribution and use of an otherwise copyrighted image. There are several websites that catalogue images, including, for example, Flickr. You can search this website for images of pregnancy, for example, and filter the results to give you only images that are licensed Creative Commons. Please ensure that you read the exact license for the image. In this Creative Commons license, you are free to use the image for non-commercial purposes as long as you acknowledge the owner of the image. Under this license, you are not allowed to alter the image in any way. 
The latest version of PowerPoint also has this function. In the top ribbon, go to Insert, then Online Pictures. A new window will appear, and in this example you can see that the Creative Commons Only box is checked. This will provide you with images that have the Creative Commons license that you are free to use in your presentations. So to sum up this section, the top tips for preparing your slides are keep the slides mostly visual, use more pictures and fewer words. Keep the slides clean and simple, use simple and consistent fonts and colour schemes. Do not include a lot of detail or clutter. Avoid death by PowerPoint. This includes boring your audience with a large amount of detail, large numbers of slides, reading from your slides and using too much animation. Ensure you have permission to use any pictures included in your slides. The final element in doing a great presentation is the messenger, that's you. You should present in a professional, calm and confident manner. This will help the audience engage with you and have confidence in your message. Most people find public speaking scary. Often though, speakers don't appear to be as nervous as they feel. There are some things you can do to manage your nervousness when doing a presentation. Be well hydrated and nourished. Even though you may be nervous, do not forgo breakfast or lunch. Your brain will work better if it is nourished and hydrated. Be well prepared and organised. You should know your material well. You should have practised your timing. You should have a printed copy of your presentation at hand and you should anticipate some of the questions you might be asked. You should have provided the presentation to the conference organisers as directed and you should arrive at the presentation room well in advance of the presentation time. Arrive ahead of time and scope out the setting and equipment. In advance of your presentation, check out the room and equipment. What sort of room is it? What is the capacity? Where will you be standing? Where is the projector and screen? And where are your controls? There is some evidence to suggest that if you adopt a power stance, even for just two minutes, your behaviour will change. You will feel more confident and powerful. These are two power stances. You could do this power pose in the bathroom before your presentation. If you want to know more about the science behind this strategy, look up the YouTube by Amy Cuddy called Your Body Language Shapes Who You Are. Think about your posture when you're in the room before your presentation begins. You might not want to adopt a power pose, but you can still have a strong posture, upright and open. Fake it till you make it. Fake confidence if you're not feeling confident. We recommend you seek out the session facilitator before your presentation. Make sure they know who you are and that you have arrived. Sit at the front of the room so you can easily take your position as presenter when your session begins. Make an effort to smile and move during the presentation. This will help you to relax and will help the audience to engage with you. We tend to speak too fast when we are nervous, so slow down if you need to. Take a few deep breaths and relax. Make eye contact with the audience. There are usually plenty of people who are friendly and smiling that you can connect with. You will notice that some people will be nodding in agreement with what you are saying. Make eye contact with them. Try to make eye contact with people in different parts of the room also. This makes people feel like you are connecting with them, that you are talking directly to them. You have put a lot of energy, time and commitment into your presentation. You've given serious thought to the key message you want to convey. And it's important that you keep the energy high and finish strongly. You want your last words to the audience to have impact. 
The last words should be your key message delivered succinctly and powerfully. Here's an example of my key message and final words delivered in a lecture that I gave arguing for the need for a standalone birth centre in my local area. This was the picture on the slide while I said, we need to break the cycle of fear and create birth environments that provoke feelings of safety, comfort and confidence. That evoke positive constructions of childbirth and lend themselves to active labour and birth. To do this, we need to move low risk birth from tertiary settings that are dominated by obstetrics and fear. We need a standalone birth centre. Here are the words again. We need a standalone birth centre. This was the last thing I wanted the audience to hear. This was the message I wanted them to take away from my lecture. Let us sum up the main points that have been covered in this session on how to do a great presentation. Make sure you are familiar with the requirement of the organising committee. Ensure that you follow these rules. Take the time to identify your key message. Your presentation will be more impactful if you have a clear message. Make your audience care about your topic. Take great care in the preparation of your slides. You are the main feature of the presentation, not your slides. They are there to support you, so don't let them be distracting. Ensure you have permission to use the pictures included in your presentation. Present yourself in the best possible light. Be proud of your work and confident in your presentation. If you don't feel this way, fake it until you make it. Don't finish with a whimper, finish powerfully. And think about the last words you want your audience to hear from you. This is the message they will take away from the presentation. Good luck with your presentation and thank you.